The existing Brunstabil bridge over the Weissach between Doran and Krumbach, was built in 1939, partly rebuilt after the considerable war damages from 1945 and again opened to traffic in 1949. In the last of the periodic bridge inspections, a state of conservation was determined which makes a renewal of the bridge urgently necessary. The new bridge is designed by the planning office SkyMeta Consult as a three-span pre-stressed concrete structure. The span widths are 38 meters, 51 meters and 38 meters, resulting in a total span of 127 meters. Construction will begin in September 2013. The foundation is made by means of two wells up to 9 meters deep per pier, which are sunk in shot creek construction method. The wells at the Krumbach Pier will be concreted at the end of November. Due to the ambitious construction schedule, work will also be carried out during the winter months so that the foundation of the piers can be completed as early as the end of February 2014. Subsequently, work will start on the two abutments. For the additional transfer of horizontal loads, permanent anchors with a length of up to 29 meters are required for the abutments. The new road cuts into the slope in the area of the rock embankment on the left-hand side following the bridge. The raising of the roadway by up to 5 meters requires the construction of a 60 meter long retaining wall on the Krumbach side. Due to the difficult ground conditions and the partly deep location of the solid rock, a deep foundation is carried out by means of drilled microbials. In March 2014, a construction crane will be installed at the Doran Pier. Afterwards, the concreting work will be started. The construction of the piers, which are over 30 meters high, will begin. Climbing formwork will be used for this. After the concreting process, the unguided formwork is completely separated from the structure and hooked back in by crane during the next concreting section. Thus, on average, a section can be concreted every second day. In the area of the abutment on the Krumbach side, another construction crane will be installed in April 2014. Due to the goals set by the client, such as the production of the construction work in the required quality and the timely completion, an ambitious construction schedule is required. The difficult circumstances, such as the unfavorable subsoil properties, as well as the cramped construction site pose additional challenges for the construction work. These challenges are met by all those involved with professional work preparation and a high level of commitment. The piers and abutments can already be completed at the end of May 2014, so that the next major construction phase, the erection of the false work, can be tackled. Due to the topographical conditions, it is not possible to lift the massive lattice girders. Therefore, the false work erector decides to slide the false work into place. The assembly of the individual truss elements takes place at the door and abutment on an upstream auxiliary yoke. Between the pier and the already assembled false work trusses, a light false work is additionally lifted in with a mobile crane. Afterwards, further massive false work trusses are connected to each other on the door and side with bolts and screws and then pushed in. The false work with a total weight of 900 tons has the task of supporting the partially completed structure including formwork with a total weight of 3000 tons. Maximum deflections of up to 19 centimeters occur in the central area. After the two massive longitudinal beams have been pushed into their final position, additional beams can be mounted in the transverse direction. Subsequently, the erection of the supporting structure will be started at the beginning of July 2014. A system formwork is used for the formwork work. This is pre-assembled on the side and then lifted in and set up.
The supporting structure is being erected in several sections. The work began with the edge fields. Subsequently, in the third section, the central supporting structure field is formed, reinforced and concreted. Before concreting, the reinforcement and the sheathing tubes for the pre-stressing cables, which will be installed later, are inserted. The remaining concreting sections will close the gaps in the piers. In total, about 3,500 square meters of formwork, 1,000 cubic meters of concrete and 150 tons of steel will be used in the supporting structure alone. After the completion of the structure, the tension cables are inserted into the already laid sheathing tubes and then pre-stressed under the supervision of the structural engineer according to a tensioning instruction. In the process, each of the 16 tension gliders, consisting of 12 tension cables, is loaded with 230 tons of tensile force and stretched up to 75 centimeters. Afterwards, the sheathing tubes are grouted with grout, which ensures a non-positive bond between the pre-stressing steel and the concrete. The false work was already lowered during the tensioning process and removed during the following winter months. In August 2014, the team will be strengthened and the construction work on the ramps will be started with an additional lot. Work begins on the Crumbark side with the construction of the 60 meter long and 6 meter high retaining wall. In December 2014, about one year after the start of construction, the work on the bridge and the structures of the ramp sections are thus largely completed. From April 2015, the rock cutting that has already begun will be continued at a height of over 10 meters. The rock layers are in the form of siltstone or mudstone, occasionally also sandstone in a predominantly friable to moderately hard form. Isolated layers showed a high degree of disintegration and in some cases complete deconsolidation. Therefore, the rock was loosened with heavy equipment exclusively by cutting and tearing. At the end of April 2015, the waterproofing work on the bridge can be carried out due to the suitable temperatures. After the appropriate substrate preparation by means of high-pressure water cleaning, a primer made of epoxy liquid resin and then two layers of bridge waterproofing made of bitumen sheeting are applied over the entire surface. In May, the curb stones will be placed on the bridge and the missing edge trims will be installed so that the prefabricated bridge railing can be mounted after the concreting work has been completed. After completion of the drainage, the road surface can be applied. Subsequently, a 14 cm thick bituminous space course and a 3 cm thick asphalt concrete surface course will be laid in the carriageway. For quality reasons, the surface course will be laid seamlessly in two nights under total closure of the state road. Afterwards, the road can be reopened to traffic. Then, at the end of August 2015, the final construction phase, the removal of the old bridge, will begin. In the first demolition phase, the asphalt layers and the reinforced concrete supporting structure slab will be removed. Special attention must be paid to this in order not to negatively affect the stability of the steel structure. In a further demolition phase, the cross girder assemblies are separated from the main girders. Then both longitudinal girders, divided into four sections, are separated and lifted out with a mobile crane.
The remaining pendulum supports have to be secured with steel cables and are finally also lifted out with a mobile crane. The steel parts are dismantled on the bed of the Visac stream and then transported away so that the final renaturation work can be carried out in October 2015. The fact that the planned schedule was not only met, but even just undercut, is once again thanks to a team of specialists. The completion of the project on time and to the required quality standards was only possible because all project participants worked together towards the common goal in a professional and collegial manner. The successful completion of the construction work is thanks to all of them.